Hello, everyone. It's great to be back in Toronto with so many outstanding members of our Liberal team. They've been true advocates for their community these last four years, helping us bring about real change for the middle class and building an economy that works for everyone. I'm very much looking forward to continuing the work we've started together after Election Day. But first, we all have a very important choice to make. On October 21st, we get to decide what kind of future we want to build together. We get to choose the kind of country we want our kids to grow up in. En 2015, les Canadiens en avaient assez du gouvernement de Stephen Harper, qui pensait que l'austérité et les coupures étaient la réponse à tout. C'était évident que les politiques des conservateurs ne fonctionnaient pas. La croissance de l'économie, la création d'emplois, la croissance des salaires, rien de tout ça ne bougeait. Four years ago, Canadians chose a new team with a new approach. A team with a clear vision of the kind of Canada they wanted to build. A Canada that is fairer, safer, and more prosperous for all Canadians. Four years later, we still have a lot of work to do. But we've moved forward from the policies of the Harper years, and we've got the record to prove it. Poverty is way down. Unemployment is at historic lows. And job creation is way up. And it's because our team rejected conservative cuts and austerity. Because we chose to put people first. We stopped sending child benefit checks to millionaires so we could send more to the single parent working two jobs and to the family of five that still has trouble making ends meet at the end of the month. On a mis plus d'argent dans les poches des Canadiens de, en baissant les impôts de la classe moyenne et en augmentant ceux du 1% les plus riches. Et on a réalisé des investissements sans précédent dans les infrastructures, que ce soit le transport, le logement abordable ou les inf infrastructures résistantes au climat. Ce sont des investissements qui font une vraie différence dans la vie des gens. Et cet automne, les Canadiens auront encore une fois une chance de voter pour le genre de Canada dans lequel ils veulent vivre. You know, I've been on the campaign trail for a little over a week now. And I've been to every province. Everywhere I go, I talk about the progress we've made, the solutions we've built, and the people we've helped. I talked about the change we delivered. Real change. But as I stand here today, I think of the thousands of families who've lost a loved one to gun violence during those same four years. On the issue of guns, one thing I can say is that not enough has changed. Don't get me wrong, we did take meaningful steps to address gun violence. Stephen Harper made it easier to purchase and transfer a weapon. We reversed that. We started requiring firearm retailers to conduct more extensive background checks, something the Conservative leader plans to scrap if he's elected. But as long as Canadians are losing their loved ones to gun violence, not enough has changed. Not for the teenager who was murdered in Mississauga on Sunday. Not for the man who is shot in Calgary on Monday. Not for the parent who buried their child. Not for the little brother or sister who's been left behind. In 2017, there were 2,500 more victims of gun violence in Canada than in 2013. 2,500. The Conservative leader looks at those numbers and still thinks it should be easier for people to buy a gun. He has vowed to gut Canada's gun control law. He wants to loosen restrictions on assault weapons. He wants to scrap enhanced background checks. And he wants people to be able to buy a gun without ever even showing their license to own it. Gun crime in Canada is on the rise. It's a fact. Frankly, I don't understand how anyone could look at this alarming trend and conclude that we need less gun control. But that's for the Conservative leaders to explain to Canadians. Here's what we will do to end gun violence. We will ban military-style assault rifles 
and start a buyback program for all military grade weapons that were legally purchased. And we will work with the provinces and territories to enable municipalities to restrict handguns. That's what a re-elected Liberal government will do. But I'll also tell you what we won't do. We will not bring back the long gun registry. And we will continue to respect Canadian farmers and hunters. But we know you do not need a military-grade assault weapon, one designed to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time, to take down a deer. Un gouvernement libéral réel va aussi prendre des mesures pour s'attaquer à la violence fondée sur le sexe et la violence familiale. On va travailler avec les provinces et les territoires pour adopter une loi qui permettrait de suspendre temporairement les permis d'armes à feu de ceux qui posent un danger à eux-mêmes ou à leurs proches. On va également exiger que les gens qui importent des munitions présentent un permis d'armes à feu validé. On va resserrer les lois sur l'entreposage des armes à feu pour empêcher que les armes obtenues de façon légale se retrouvent dans les mains des criminels. Et on va limiter la glorification de la violence en créant des nouveaux règlements sur la publicité, la commercialisation et la vente d'armes à feu. It's time to end gun violence in Canada, and that's what a re-elected Liberal government will strive to do. I've often said that politics is about people. And on this particular issue, here's the hard truth. People are dying. Families are grieving. Communities are suffering. So we're going to do more, and we're going to do better. Thoughts and prayers are just not going to cut it. The choice could not be clearer. Liberals are for tougher gun laws. Conservatives are for weaker gun laws. That's That's the difference between forward and backwards. And that's what choosing forward means. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Hi, Michelle Zaleo with the Globe and Mail. If you can Engli uh, answer in English and French, that would be appreciated for my colleagues. The vast majority of handguns used in crimes in Toronto come from outside the city. In fact, the Danforth handgun came from Saskatchewan. A municipal ban would do little to stop the flow of these domestic guns into the city. So my question is, why aren't the Liberals willing to have a countrywide ban on handguns? We're moving forward on an approach that is going to work to keep our communities safer. We know that banning military-style assault weapons uh, is an important step in keeping Canadians safe and strengthening the safe storage laws for legal gun, handgun owners uh, is going to be uh, extremely important as well to prevent uh, legally purchased firearms and handguns from ending up in criminal hands. But we've also heard very clearly from a number of cities like Toronto and others who have said that they want more tools to restrict handguns uh, within their municipalities. Uh, and that's why we're going to work with them and work with provinces and territories uh, to give them the power to do just that. Nous reconnaissons uh, qu'on a besoin de protéger les Canadiens et nos communautés de la violence avec les armes à feu. Uh, C'est pour ça qu'on fait l'annonce aujourd'hui pour bannir les armes d'assaut et pour permettre aux municipalités et aux villes de restreindre les armes de poing. Nous savons qu'il y a des mesures qu'on fait qui vont euh, renforcer la sécurité, empêcher les armes achetées de façon légale euh, d'être volées par des criminels. Mais nous avons aussi entendu euh, de plusieurs grandes villes, dont Toronto et Montréal, qui voudraient avoir plus d'outils pour restreindre les armes de poing. 
Et donc, nous allons travailler avec eux et avec les provinces et territoires pour leur donner les outils pour faire exactement ça. Tom Perry with CBC News, uh, if I can get you to answer in English and French as well. There are already strict limits on who can own an AR-15 or a weapon like that. There are limits on the size of the magazine you can have for this weapon. So what's the justification for banning it outright? And on your buyback program, uh, what happens if someone doesn't want to sell you their weapon? Are you not turning law-abiding gun owners into criminals? Um, we recognize uh, that uh, there's always going to be more to do on uh, protecting citizens and communities from gun violence. That's why if we're moving forward on banning assault weapons and enabling cities uh, to ban, to restrict handguns, uh, we believe that the choice is very clear. Liberals want to strengthen gun control. Conservatives want to weaken it. Conservative leader has talked about uh, expanding the size of magazines available. We think that's a step in exactly the wrong direction. The Conservatives want to loosen gun laws. We want to strengthen them. We know uh, that guns designed for killing the largest amount of people in the shortest amount of time have no place in Canadian society, have no place in our communities. That is why we are going to military style of Pourquoi vous ne bannissez pas simplement les armes de poing au pays? Pourquoi vous laissez ça aux villes? Ça veut dire qu'ici, il pourrait ne pas y en avoir, dans d'autres villes, il pourrait en avoir. On pourrait aller en achetant en Saskatchewan et venir faire une fusillade ici, comme ça s'est vu à Danford. Pourquoi vous ne faites pas simplement les interdire partout? Euh, on comprend que l'approche euh, doit toujours euh, être mesurée et basée euh, sur les faits. C'est pour ça que nous entendons les villes qui euh, veulent restreindre et bannir les armes de poing dans leur ville et nous allons euh, permettre euh, et donner aux outils, les outils aux provinces, aux territoires et aux villes euh, d'avancer avec là. Euh, mais pour la vaste majorité euh, de propriétaires euh, d'armes de poing, euh, nous allons pour, pour, cette, pour les propriétaires d'armes de poing, nous allons renforcer euh, les règlements autour euh, de l'entreposage, le remisage et la sécurité de ces armes à feu pour s'assurer que moins de criminels puissent uh, voler des armes uh, à des propriétaires d'armes à feu. Uh, David Aiken, Global News. Thank you for all the time you gave us yesterday on the Black Face, Brown Face issue. Just one last quick cleaning up. We know the context for the Arabian Nights uh, event. We know the context for the high school events, for the performances or the festival. What about the video? What, why did you do that? What was the context in which you decided to put on the blackface there? What were you doing? Can, did, did you remember that one? And, and can you tell us where that happened? It was a uh, costume day for river guides on uh, on the uh, on the on the whitewater rafting uh, uh, in the whitewater rafting operation that I uh, that I worked at in the summer of between ninety two and ninety four, roughly. Okay. Uh, ça, cet incident-là s'est passé euh, pendant euh, l'été de 92 à 94 quand je travaillais en tant que guide de rivière euh, sur euh, la rivière Rouge euh, au, euh, au Québec. C'était une journée de, de, de déguisement. Good morning, Mr. Trudeau. Theresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has uh, said this morning that he was surprised to see images of you uh, wearing blackface, and particularly at the number of times uh, that you wore it. What kind of an impact do you think that this is going to have on your international reputation, and how do you think it will affect your credibility as a world leader? My focus is on Canadians who face discrimination every day, Canadians who are racialized, uh, who live with intolerance and marginalization as uh, part of their daily experience, who I hurt. People who, uh, in many cases, considered me to be an ally, uh, who are uh, deeply hurt by the terrible choice, choices I made many years ago. Uh, I apologize deeply to them, and I will focus on continuing what I have uh, tried to do as a leader, which is always stand against racism and discrimination at home and on the world stage. Mon emphase aujourd'hui et à tous les jours sera sur les Canadiens minoritaires qui se font discriminer à cause de leur identité à tous les jours. Les gens qui vivent de l'intolérance 
comme, euh, comme quelque chose de, de régulier que j'ai blessé avec mes choix du passé. Je m'en excuse profondément et je m'engage à continuer d'être euh, un allié et de continuer à travailler contre euh, l'intolérance et la discrimination euh, ici au Canada et partout dans le monde. Prime Minister, good morning. David Jungman from Reuters. Um, your MPs are unhappy, your candidates are unhappy, there are members of your cabinet who are not particularly happy, and some members of the cabinet table who sit around you have issued long, now I'd say philosophical statements. Others, such as your foreign minister, issued a fairly clipped three-paragraph statement yesterday. How secure do you feel in your leadership in the days and the months and the, uh, well, days, weeks and months to come? Uh, I'm going to continue to stay focused on uh, working hard for a better Canada. And uh, I know that there are uh, Canadians, uh, many, many Canadians, that I have deeply hurt uh, with uh, the choices I made. And uh, I am going to work very, very hard to demonstrate that as a, an individual and as a leader, uh, I will continue to stand against intolerance and racism. I will uh, continue to stand alongside them as an ally as we strive to build a better world. Uh, I let them down. I let a lot of people down, and I am deeply sorry for that. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, all over the world today, people are out on the streets demonstrating about climate change. Without going into a recap of what you've done so far, I'd like to know if you are reelected, what new initiatives, what new things would you do to reduce emissions? I uh, want to begin by uh, celebrating those young people who are taking to the streets around the world uh, to highlight that this is their future, this is our future we are talking about, and we need uh, to continue to step up in the fight against climate change uh, here at home across Canada and around the world. That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we will have uh, a lot more to say uh, in the coming days and weeks, uh, but you can rest assured that we will continue in our ambition and our determination uh, to uh, fight climate change uh, and support Canadians through this uh, change uh, in our economy, in uh, our world, as we protect our environment and create a better future for our kids and grandkids. En français? Uh, je veux célébrer aujourd'hui ces jeunes qui démontrent du leadership, qui démontrent qu'ils uh, veulent prendre action, qu'ils veulent uh, qu'on continue dans la lutte contre les changements climatiques ici au Canada et partout dans le monde. Uh, nous allons avoir des annonces ambitieuses pour continuer notre travail dans la lutte contre les changements climatiques. Uh, on a déjà fait plus que n'importe quel autre gouvernement pour protéger l'environnement et contrer les changements climatiques. Mais on entend très clairement ces jeunes et ces gens d'à travers le pays qui nous disent qu'on doit en faire plus et on va en faire plus. J'ai hâte aux annonces qu'on va faire là-dessus. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. David Cochran with CBC News. We've just learned that your campaign director has reached out to Jagmeet Singh's campaign director to arrange a conversation between the leaders, uh, possibly. What do you want to say to Mr. Singh after the events of the last several days? Um, I will uh, be apologizing to him personally as uh, a racialized Canadian, as uh, I have been apologizing to Canadians who have uh, suffered discrimination and, uh, and intolerance their entire lives in ways that some of us, like me, have never had to experience on a daily basis. Um, this is an incident for which I am deeply sorry, and I uh, have apologized to Canadians, but I have also pledged uh, to continue to work uh, with all Canadians in the fight against Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, anti-black racism, racism and intolerance uh, in all its shapes and forms. Uh, and uh, on that, uh, I am certainly uh, in a deep agreement uh, with Mr. Singh, and uh, I look forward to having a good conversation with him. Um, je vais certainement uh, partager avec uh, Mr. Singh uh, les excuses que je partage avec et que j'offre à, à tous les Canadiens uh, qui uh, vivent la discrimination à tous les jours que j'ai blessé uh, par mes actions. Et on va certainement parler de comment uh, 
je peux, un gouvernement peut continuer à lutter contre la discrimination à tous les jours et protéger et, et donner plus d'opportunités aux Canadiens qui vivent de la discrimination à cause de leur identité. Uh, Lucas Marion, you talked in time. Prime Minister, will you confirm that press is reporting that according to a high-ranking Liberal official that you, the campaign, the Liberals are expecting more photos to come out. Will you confirm that? Um, I have nothing to confirm on that. So there could be more? I have nothing to confirm on that. Um, and just really quickly on guns, can you talk, the mayor has talked a lot about stopping smuggling at the border. Um, what are going to be the actions on there? Oh, we are going to. Uh, we have taken significant measures to uh, strengthen uh, our uh, border controls. The Conservatives cut uh, the Canada Border Services Agency uh, in their 10 years in office. Uh, we have invested massively in securing our border uh, to an increasing degree, and we will have uh, more to say about our plans on that. Today, our announcement is on how we're going to be banning military-style assault weapons and working with municipalities uh, to restrict handguns. Uh, we recognize that there is more to do. Uh, that's why Liberals believe in strengthening gun control, while Conservatives believe in weakening it. Uh, nous avons pris uh, plusieurs mesures au cours des quatre dernières années pour donner plus de ressources et plus de capacités uh, à protéger uh, nos frontières uh, de, des armes à feu illégaux qui, uh, qui traversent. Uh, mais nous reconnaissons qu'il y a plus à faire et on va avoir d'autres annonces à faire là-dessus. Uh, Aujourd'hui, notre annonce, c'est qu'on est en train de... Uh, on va bannir uh, les armes d'assaut et travailler avec les provinces pour permettre aux municipalités uh, de restreindre uh, les armes, à, armes de poing. Brian Lilly, Toronto Sun. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, is there anything else in your past from your youth before your time in politics, be it at West Point Grey Academy or anywhere else, that you think Canadians should know about now or that if you were running for the Liberals for the first time, a vetting committee might take some real issue with? Uh, I have been uh, forthright about the incidents that I remember, uh, as uh, was uh, pointed out. Um, I hadn't remembered uh, the incident on the, uh, on, in the, uh, the, rafting, uh, the rafting company I was working for, uh, and that's why I am wary about being definitive. I did not uh, realize at the time how much this hurt uh, minority Canadians, uh, racialized Canadians, and for that I am deeply sorry. I hurt people who uh, consider me uh, and have considered me to be an ally, and I will continue to fight against racism and discrimination uh, with everything I do as leader. But, but beyond blackface, any other type of incidents or actions of yours, I mean? Not that I can recall. Yeah, Ang Shi from Loving Sister. You apologized immediately after the black face issue emerged, but you haven't apologized or taken any actions regarding the SNC leveling scandal. Uh, some feminists, they were um, disillusioned that because of the way you treated the two strong female feminists, uh, female ministers and uh, they were disappointed that you you didn't honor your promise to run a transparent uh, government and uh, to hold the principle of uh, the independence of judici uh, judicial review uh, judicial <coughs> independence and uh, so what actions are you going to take to convince the di disillusioned feminists that you are still can be trusted and to be voted for First of all, I recognize that one of the fundamental jobs of any Prime Minister is to stand up for the public interest, to stand up for Canadian jobs, and that's exactly what I did. And that what I will always do is stand up for Canadians and their jobs and their pensions and their communities. I will do that in a way that will and always has respected the independent judicial processes that are core to our institutions and our democracy. That is why I asked uh, the Honorable Anne McClellan uh, to gather recommendations by a broad range of experts, consult with uh, just about every living former Attorney General in this country, to make recommendations so that no future government uh, is uh, in the situation that we, we were in. Uh, we will continue to stand up for Canadian jobs. We will continue uh, 
to respect the independence of our judiciary and future governments will have better tools to be able to do that. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, were you ever a member of any fraternity while in college that discriminated and campaigned against immigration? And uh, secondly, I couldn't see any member of the cabinet racialized community behind you. Is this a cheesing in the political campaign as we are witnessing it today? Um, first of all, I, uh, I was never a, a member of any fraternity in my uh, university years uh, or organizations that uh, discriminated against people. My, um, uh, my primary involvement in uh, clubs uh, in university was uh, both the McGill Debating Union and the McGill Student Society, uh, the uh, Sexual Assault Center of the McGill Student Society, um, where I uh, fought against and stood against uh, the kind of um, challenges that far too many uh, women were facing around sexual assault and still continue to face. Um, in regards to uh, the people here today, there are many, uh, many great candidates from all sorts of different backgrounds. Uh, and Sorry? Mary, 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 Mary Ng is here. And yes, Mary Ng is, is, is here. Uh, we have a great team of diverse Canadians who step forward uh, to serve Canada, including in our cabinet. And we're going to continue to uh, make sure that we have a government uh, and a party that looks like Canada. Hello, uh, Ed Tuck, Toronto Star. Um, the uh, Premier Doug Ford of Ontario has said that he would oppose a handgun ban, uh, a ban on handgun sales in the city of Toronto. Um, how would the Liberals ensure that if the city, as it has said it wants to do, uh, wants the right to impose a handgun ban on in the city of Toronto, that it can follow through with the province opposing? Uh, we, we are going to be working with uh, municipalities across the country uh, on giving them the ability to restrict uh, handguns within their, their uh, city limits. Uh, we recognize that uh, there are many conservatives out there who think we should be weakening gun control. Uh, I disagree. Liberals think we need to strengthen gun control and we need to listen uh, to municipal leaders like John Tory, Valérie Plante uh, and others uh, who've been very clear that uh, they need to keep their citizens safe by uh, further limiting handguns in their cities and uh, we will work with them and with the provinces uh, to give them something that uh, not just municipal leaders but many, many Canadians are asking for. Okay. And Nous reconnaissons effectivement qu'il y a des euh, politiciens conservateurs euh, qui veulent euh, affaiblir le contrôle des armes à feu. Euh, les libéraux, nous, on veut resserrer le contrôle des armes à feu. Et on, on entend très clairement les leaders euh, de grandes villes, de petites villes, euh, comme Valérie Plante et John Tory, qui nous ont dit très clairement qu'ils veulent plus d'outils pour pouvoir restreindre les armes de poing dans leur municipalité et nous nous engageons de travailler avec eux et avec les provinces et territoires euh, pour répondre à ce besoin de garder nos communautés encore plus sécures. Euh, nous, nous allons entamer les conversations nécessaires pour y arriver. Hi, Jim Goodfroy from CP24. I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond to some comments made in an interview that I conducted with the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Toronto. Uh, in regards to the photos and video, they say that they were outraged but not surprised uh, given your track record on policy relating to race, that the apology was filled with empty words, and that the apology doesn't matter. What matters most is how you will fix race relations. I'd like you to respond to that. Obviously, I uh, deeply hurt uh, racialized Canadians, and I am deeply sorry for that. I understand uh, the anger and the frustration of people who uh, every day face uh, discrimination, face uh, anti-black racism, face systemic bias, uh, face, uh, face uncon un unconscious bias and systemic discrimination. Uh, these are things that our government has taken significant steps not just to stand against uh, but to actually act on. Uh, whether it was recognizing the UN decade of uh, people of African descent and uh, investing 25 million dollars uh, 
uh, over the coming years uh, so that community organizations uh, in the black community can have uh, the financing and funding uh, to continue to help members of their community, whether it's moving forward on a national anti-racism strategy that includes anti-black racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and other forms of discrimination and intolerance. Uh, we have uh, moved forward uh, in many different ways of uh, trying to demonstrate a government that will consistently and unequivocally stand up to defend people's rights, to defend people against intolerance and discrimination. But I recognize there is much, much more to do. And I recognize that on a personal level, I deeply hurt and disappointed many people who considered me to be an ally. And for that, I am deeply sorry. Merci tout le monde.